you found the one, you should never give her up. I think it's the way life changes when in love, yeah. Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel, Corinne's Orchids. Hope you're having a great day today and that you're doing fine. Today, um, we're going to take a look at my ketocidin type orchids and yeah I, I think I'm gonna make three videos about my ketocidin type orchids this year. I divide them into three different seasons right early spring, mid season and late season. So this is part one early spring. <laughs> well <laughs> we're approaching Ah, uh, late spring now, in May. But in a way, it's still early spring for my guys. Here's where this sits right now. And I think I have to move them as they grow taller and taller. But it's not going to happen yet. Perhaps in August, September, when they're approaching the maximum size. And for your information, I've been growing cladocidinate type orchids for, well, about seven years now. And I found that the lazier I get, the less I will succeed with them. So I found that it's important to stick to the uh, proper care guides. The ones that I was so eager to stick to when I first started to grow them. If you see what I mean. Okay, so we're going to take a look at a few of them. I just started to water it a little bit more heavy. I look what happened only after a couple of days, I didn't have to do anything. Manually separate the leaves or anything. Uh, yeah, they just open up all by themselves, by their own machine. <laughs> and I should have been uh, more consistent with keeping the surface a little bit moist as the new growth was approaching, but I didn't. But now it's starting to open and it's starting to get stiff and a little bit fatter at the base. And I think that there's going to be something else down there. Because this one could feel that it's not going to perform at the best this season. So maybe I will get another new growth down there, perhaps. But so now you can see that humidity is really, really important for ketocidinate type orchids. And today, I'm going to talk a little bit about them, a few of them. I'm not going to show you all of them. This is my Fred Clark Chiara After Dark Black Pearl. The one I showed you in my care collab not so long ago about this orchid. It had a really, really, really little, little, little green uh, bump down there. Which I could not decide if it was going to be a flower spike or a new growth, but it was a new growth. Quite early out in the season, I think. This one is usually late to produce its new growth. So, I have not yet started to uh, water this guy. Because I failed a little bit with it last season and I started to water him a bit too early. And a lot of his new roots died off. Even though the roots were really long. You can see now the roots are down halfway down into the pot. And that's not long enough to get the whole pot soggy. Or shall I say damp. That's not a good thing. The roots are going to die off. I can almost assure you that. But on the other hand, you can spray it a little bit around the rim of the pot, only to the surface, preferably not on the roots, okay? They turn a little bit green. This can be confusing sometimes, says I know that if I irrigate too much on top here, the root tips are going to stop growing. Well, why search for water when you can receive it from the, from the surface, all right? Why go down? So, I'm not gonna, even though the root turn green on this guy, it's not appropriate to start watering it yet anyway. 
So this is also a confusing device. So it doesn't work for all of them. That's what I'm aiming at. That's what I'm trying to tell you, all right? And now over to the next orchid. This one seems to be at a similar growing stage, but it's not. Its roots are already down there. You can see it's getting where I want it to be. Its root is going down there into the water reservoir. So it's doing its thing and it's doing what I want it to do. And this Moniara Millennium Magic Witchcraft was already watered. It was damp when I received it. So only today I started to fertilize it quite lightly. And I go over it with my sprayer and I don't keep it too damp. No, not yet, but quite damp. And soon I'm going to start watering it heavy. All right, really heavy. And I have a few more orchids, quite large, Cadizedony type orchids. They are off to somebody else. Uh, they are mislabeled, some of them, okay? And they are large and they don't bloom for me. That's the reason. And that guy, he really, really grow Cadizedony type orchids well. And he's got the right environment for them. This is my species, uh, Cadizedum saccadum. Yeah? And it's working on its new growth. Yeah, it's coming on nicely. Its roots are not ready to be watered yet. But I can repot him for him. So I think I'm going to do that. So they won't dry out. But it's been divided in two pieces. I'll just yeah, put them together. So I won't mix them up for him. <laughs> yes. And this one. It's also a no ID ketacetum, and it's a really large one, the largest one I've got so far. And it won't bloom for me, no matter what I do and how I try. It just won't bloom. And it's always late in season to produce its uh, new growth. It's coming here, and it's not very tall, as you can see. But it grows really fast, so at the end of the season, when it drops its leaves, last of all of them, <laughs> Perhaps he can show us some blooms on this guy, so we can finally see what it is. No ID from eBay. And this one is um, Clovisia Dodsoniana, but this one did bloom for me, I think, last season or the season before that. Yeah, it grows really large and it's working on another, yet another new growth here. And its roots are growing really fast on this particular variety. But they shall not be watered for a very long time. These roots are so... It seems like they've been painted with some glue or something. They're shiny and will not take up any water for a long time. All right? And it bloomed and the blooms wasn't the blooms on the picture that Clovisia Dotsoniana should have. But the blooms were okay, you can see them in the picture here. But mislabel orchids are really not my favorite. So, And the last orchid to go with this no ID as well. That's been working on a little new growth. Yeah, and this one is also late. I have no clue what it is. So, And now look at my orchids, the ones I decided to keep. The less Cadizedony type orchids I have, the more and better I can take care of them. So, this is uh, a divided orchid. It's Cadizedum Charlesworthy times Cadizedon Ornitoides. And yeah, I split it up in two pieces, but I put them together again. So, in order to save some space. And they're on the way, and they're growing nicely now, since I started to spray the surface a bit, like this. And doesn't matter if the roots can take up some moisture or not. It's the thing with uh, Ketacetony type orchids. The pseudobobs are taking up the moisture anyway. That's fun to see. And it's confusing, of course, but it's fun to see. 
And this one is a nice grower. And I would really love to see some flowers on this guy. Yes? And this one is my Mormodia Painted Desert. That's a quite common one. <laughs> and times Catecedum Spitzy Red. So this is going to be red flowers. And it usually shrivels up a bit during dormancy. But it's a, it's a good grower. Even though it's new growth, it's quite late. So it tried to bloom the first season. And one day it will. <laughs> okay. This one, Moniara, Jumbo Delight. It had a large pseudobulb last year, but it rotted off. Since I put my leafless and rootless catacetony type orchids a little bit too close to the humidifier. So a lot of the pseudobulbs rotted off this year, so no, 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 no humidity during dormancy. It's not a good idea. But perhaps this one can grow on. This one is my Fred Clark Chiara of the Dark Sunset Valley. And Sunset Valley in this case is the variation, the clone. Uh, and it's always late, so I'm not worried. This one is really starting to plump up now. Since I just gave it a little bit more humidity here. Ketacetum sanguineum. Or how it's pronounced. I'm quite bad at pronouncing ketacetum type names or orchid names for that matter. But I'm trying at least. Yeah, it's already plump. And this one grows really fat, nice pseudobobs. I cannot wait to see the flowers. I've had this one for three years now. From Orchid Garden in Poland. Yeah, I think it was from eBay I got this one. Now let's see what's happening here. There's a little uh, snake pit of uh, <laughs> orchids in this cup. The ones that failed? No. The ones that has not yet performed this year. I'm still waiting on a few of these guys to put out some new growth. Yeah. Pentacolatum, for example, will not perform this year. Maybe next year. And this one. Cluisha. Rosia. Does not want to perform either this year, I think. But sometimes she's real late. So I'm not so worried. We got next year. And this one, I think this one is my favorite Ketacetony type orchid. It's my Clovisia, Rebecca Northern, Mikabi from Elsner. She bloomed two years ago, as you can see. And last year, or shall I say in January this year, <laughs> she tried to give me two spikes, but they blasted. Yeah, probably a lack of humidity or something else. But I'm not giving up on her since she's given me two new growth this year from where the flower spikes has been. The ones that failed. So this can be nice. And she's already plumping up because of the little spraying I've been doing. I'm repeating myself here, yeah, I know that. I'm perfectly aware of that. But that's where I made the mistake. So I don't want you to make the same mistake as I did, all right? I'm trying to be kind. <laughs> and this is my <clears throat> Cygnotus Pendactylon. This one bloomed for me last year. It's a beautiful orchid. And she was, yeah, she was first out together with my Susan Fuchs this season. I showed you this one in my IKEA accessory shopping video. She had started on a new growth down here at the base and I was really happy that she decided to put out a new growth from the base and from nowhere else. But I didn't spray it. 
I didn't give it enough humidity, so she aborted, or shall we say, her new growth dried out. And now, bad things are happening, the things that didn't want to happen. Yeah, so now the new growth is going to be up here. So that means I have to cut this one here, or perhaps bury the base, in order to get the new roots down into the media. So this one is going to be a tricky one if it doesn't rot off because it's, it turned a little bit soft. But I think it's hardening on now a bit. So, well, fingers crossed for this one. It's a really lovely one. And so a really, really um, nice tip that I can give to you is don't keep the dormant leafless orchids in a humid position. It's a big no, no, no. All right. Keep them. If you prefer to keep them uh, rootless with all the roots cut off. Or if you want to keep the roots in the media, that's fine. As long as you don't keep them in a humid position. In that case, they can surely easily rot for you. Okay. And that we would like to avoid, won't we? And... In growing stage, when they look like this, especially when there are seedlings, they really, really enjoy a lot of humidity. You can provide it for them with humidity trays, yeah, as well as the fargo. But only when they started on new growth, not before, not when they're in a, the dormant state. Well, speaking from experience, my own real experience, that is, keep them warm in a quiet sunny position, but not in direct sunlight. Perhaps a mix of natural sunlight, a bit away from the window, as well as some LED light. All right. Keep the orchids as they start on the new growth, a little bit damp at the surface. And... Don't be too fast to watering them. Spray them a little bit instead around the surface. And see too that you don't get any water between the sheath, the new leaf base. All right? They can easily rot for you before they even have the chance to develop. So, well, that's my tip. And for the ones that start the growth a little bit earlier than, than the other ones, don't hesitate to water them a bit, otherwise they can stall, all right? But it varies from species to species and clone to clone. Well, guys, I think I just about covered it all. And, well, I'm not going to show you any repartings in this video, this spring session, since I figured that I already showed you a reparting early spring repotting on a few of my Ketosedony type orchids in my care collab about my Fred Clark Chiara After Dark Black Pearl which the video that I'm gonna link to so you can see for yourself the repotting in early spring on a Ketosedony type orchid so well if you find anything useful in this video please hit the thumbs up Share, comment, and subscribe. So, I will be really happy if you did so. Thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, my next video is going to be an unboxing video. And, well, don't miss part two and part three. Mid-season and late-season videos about my Get a Set in the Type Orchids. Which I'm going to produce later on this year. Alright, until I see you next time, take care. And have a good day. Bye-bye.